when I was in Buffalo, the my last lecture was at the Buffalo uh, University College. <clears throat> so I began a series of lectures uh, for the young boys and girls. Uh, this series of lecture is not manufactured by me. Our process is not manufacturing. <clears throat> the Vedic process is not personal opinion. Our process is simply to carry the transcendental message to the people. Our system is so nice that we haven't got to manufacture daily a new thesis. The difficulty of modern age is not modern age, it is also old system <clears throat> because in the Srimad Bhagavatam we find one verse which says tarka apartishtya simple arguments and logic will not carry you to the absolute truth. Tarka. Tarka means arguments. You may be very good logician. You can argue very nicely, but Another logician may come and defeat you. That is going on. New philosopher, new logician, new thinker means he defeats his previous thinkers, logicians and philosophers and become prominent. That is the materialistic way of <coughs> gaining name, fame and popularity. Uh, but our process is different. Tarka we, we accept that simply by arguments and logic it is not possible to approach the Absolute Truth. Absolute Truth is not subjected to our deficient logic or argument. Uh, <coughs> So tarka pratishta sutayo vibhinna. If somebody says that, well, argument and logic is not the way to approach the absolute truth, then let us take uh, scriptures, the authority of the scriptures. That is also very nice. Uh, in every human society there is some sort of scripture, just like in your country there is Bible or any other scripture. <clears throat> we have got Vedas, the Mahamedans, they have got Qurans. They, they can help also, they are because that is also authority. But you will find that one scripture is differing from the other scripture. In some details, uh, of course, on the average there is no difference. Just like Bible preaches, Lord Jesus Christ preaches love of God, we are also preaching the same thing, love of God. But our process is little different, that's all. That process may be different according to time, circumstances, people. That is natural. Therefore, for a neophyte, simply by consulting scriptures, 
you will not be able to reach to the absolute goal. Because you will find, oh, sometimes they become skeptic. Oh, just like in the modern age, the youngsters, you all boys and girls, they are becoming skeptic. <coughs> they don't, don't believe in any scripture now because they find some differences. Therefore, Bhagavad says that tarka pratishtha sutayu vibhinya. Simply by argument you cannot establish what is absolute truth. And if you consult different scriptures, you will find difference of opinion or difference of procedures, rituals. <coughs> So, sutaya vimīnya nāsa munijya samatāṅgana vimīnyam. And if we consult great uh, thinkers or philosophers, uh, they have got their different opinions. Some philosopher says, I think this is light, I think this is light. So whom you will accept? They are also of different opinion. Tarko pratishta sutayo bhivinya nāsu munijya samatham na bhinyam. You won't find a single philosopher <coughs> whose opinion is not different from the previous philosopher. Or muni. Muni means thought, uh, thinker, thoughtful man, muni, from mind. Nāsau munijyasya vatāṅna bhīnyam dharmasya tattaṁ nihitaṁ guhāya. Therefore, to understand the absolute truth, it is very difficult to find out how to have it. But the only one way recommended in the Vedic scripture that mahājana jena gata sapantha, mahājana, Mahajana means great personality. Uh, Mahajana jena gata sapantha. That is the real path. If you follow <coughs> the great personality. Uh, now there is a difference of great personalities also. Uh, you think that he is great personality he thinks another great personality. But there is a definition of great personality. That definition is given in the Bhagavad Gita that Bahunam Janmanamante Gyanavan Mang Prabhadate Vasudeva Sarvamiti Sa Mahatma Sudullava. After uh, Many, many uh, transmigration or changing the body. We should always remember that our, this Krishna consciousness begins from the fact that we living entities, we are not material product. We are part and parcel of God. We are qualitatively one with God but quantitatively different from him. That is our philosophy. Living entity and God, as it is stated in the Bhagavad Gita, they are qualitatively one. God is also a living entity like you and me, but he is qualitatively, uh, uh, unlimitedly a power. That is the difference. Just like we find every one of us sitting here, you will find some difference. You may be a, a greater personality than me. Another gentleman may be a greater personality than you. And somebody may be greater than him. Somebody may be greater than him. Uh, similarly, if you go up to the 
uh, post of your president, Mr. Nixon, he is supposed to be the greatest personality in your country, but you will find a greater personality than him also. Go on, searching. So these greater personality, you may be greater than me, but you are also person, I am also person, President Nixon is also a person. All this greatness may be different, but so far we are personally concerned, the personal propensities, the personal needs, personal necessities, everything, they are the equal. Come on. There is no difference. So God is also a person, but His personality is different from us because he is, we know that God is great, he is omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent. There are so many qualifications we uh, qualify God. <coughs> so, uh, uh, Mahatma Anustamang Pratha Devi Prakriti Masrita, the great personality. So far we are concerned. A great personality is he who is a devotee of God. He is great personality. Just like in your country you accept Lord Jesus Christ, a great personality, uh, his Son of God, are taking as uh, personality uh, one of the human beings. Still he is great because he is preached. God consciousness, Krishna consciousness. Uh, that is the taste of great personality. Mahajana jina gatasya pantha. So in Buffalo, I was instructing the younger boys and girls in the college that you are very nicely situated. Your country is uh, economically very uh, well equipped. You are very good looking. Your education is very nice. You have got hundreds of universities in our country. Practically there is no man or woman illiterate. So your situation comparatively with other nations or other country is very good. That is admitted by everyone. So uh, you should utilize this opportunity. That is my request. Your oil situation, uh, your material prosperity, your intelligence, your education should be properly utilized. It should not be misused. Uh, what is misused and what is proper utilization? That is also explained by the Shabdev in this instruction. He says, that nāyaṁ deha deho bhājaṁ niloke. You have got this opportunity. Rishabdev was instructing to his sons. Rishabdev was the emperor of the world. Naturally, his sons were also princes. They are not ordinary boys. They are not ordinary boys. They, he had hundred sons. And uh, he was instructing them before retirement. He was instructing them, my dear boys, that this body, if you think that you have very, very nice princely body and you are the son of, of a great emperor, so if you simply utilize your opportunity for sense gratification, uh, that is not go. That is not go. Because every conditioned soul, every living entity is prone to certain types of sense gratification. Ah. So when one is very nicely situated, sense gratification can be seen, can be 
acquired kind we had even in the lower animals. So Rishabdev instructed his sons, my dear boys, you do not misuse your opportunity simply by sense gratification. Because sense gratification is also possible in the lower animals like cats, dogs, and hogs. They have got also ample opportunity for sense gratification. Uh, the dog in the street, uh, he can uh, gratify his senses, sex life with so many dogs. The hogs also, uh, he can also satisfy his senses in so many sea hogs. So that is, that opportunity is there in the cats and dogs and hogs life. So Rishabdev advised his sons, don't spoil your opportunity simply by imitating the cats, dogs and hogs. So the same thing, not I am manufacturing, I am just following the footprints of Rishabdev. Although I am not emperor of the world, but I am a teacher. It is my duty, not only to you, to everyone, but I take your country, I have come to your country with a special purpose, with a special mission, that if the American boys and girls take this Krishna consciousness movement very seriously, then that will be followed by other countries and the face of the world will change. That is my request. And I am glad also that my students, my disciples, who are already uh, under my instruction and following, they are all boys and girls. None of them are above twenty-five years. Our, I think, oldest student is Pitrananda. He is uh, 30 or 31 years. Otherwise, all our students are young boys. You see all these boys, they are sitting. So I am very hopeful <coughs> that youngsters of this country are taking this movement uh, a little seriously. Therefore, I am hopeful. And I request also, that you have got all opportunities, you don't misuse it simply for sense gratification. That is my request. Then what should be the purpose of life? This opportunity, this nice intelligence, nice education, nice beautiful body, nice economic condition, that should be utilized for tapasya. Tapasya means austerity, restriction. Ah. Restriction. Just like our students, we advise our students and they follow that you don't have illicit sex life. Ah. Boys and girls they are mixing, making friendship, that is nice, that is natural. A young boy is attracted by a young girl, or a young girl is attracted by a young boy. That is not unnatural, because it is in the Supreme Lord. That nice love attraction is Radha Krishna. Krishna is a boy, sixteen years old boy, and Radharani is also a fifteen years old girl. Not even one year, I think, fifteen days younger. So our worshipful object is that spiritual love, Radha and Krishna. But the so-called love in this material world is only a perverted reflection. It is only lust. So. You have, by austerity, you have to change that lust into love. If you love one girl, if you love one boy, that is very nice, that is natural, that is not unnatural. But don't change that love. Be combined, permanent. 
Be combined. Not that after a few months I give up this girl, I give up this boy, I capture another. No. That is austerity. That is austerity. Oh. I purposely, although I am a sannyasi, I have no interest with family life. Oh. Neither we are expected to take part in this uh, man and uh, woman relationship, but still, purposely, I have uh, married so many couples, boys and girls, just to see them uh, uh, happy. Without happiness, without being in good mood of mind, you cannot prosecute Krishna consciousness. That is also stated in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Evam prasanna manasu bhagavad bhakti yogata. Bhagavad tatta vijyanam mukta sangasya jayat. Prasanna manasu. Unless you become joyful in your mind by executing devotional service. Evang prasanna. Prasanna means joyful. Manasa. Manasa means mind. When you are fully joyful in your mind, by executing devotional service, evang prasanna manaso bhagavad bhakti yogata. How one can become joyful simply by executing Krishna consciousness? Not otherwise. It is not possible. So austerity means we are not imposing upon you that you go to the forest and you uh, live in a cave or you don't eat or don't see any human being, you just meditate for 300 years. No, that is not possible. That is not possible. You cannot go to the forest, you cannot go to the mountain, neither you can meditate. All, all these are not recommended in this age. That is not possible. If somebody imitates or try to imitate, this is simply wasting time. Only austerity is that uh, don't have illicit sex life. Just like cats and dogs. Uh, because marriage is recommended in human society. There is no marriage in cat society, dog society, hog society. Any human society you take, either in the Western world or in the Eastern world, or in Christian society, Hindu society, Mohammedan society, in every civilized human society there is a ceremony called marriage. And that is also Vedic system, that one should not have any illicit sex life, but one should be combined according to religious right, and live peacefully and execute Krishna consciousness. This much austerity. The next austerity, we say that don't take any animal food. There is no need of taking. Perhaps you are coming to our love feast. We can prepare. Of course, these boys and girls are not very expert. But still, whatever they have learned, and they are supplying uh, prasadam to your American boys and girls and people, they are appreciating very much. In Los Angeles, that is our biggest temple in your country, we get in, a, in every love feast days not less than 200 guests. They come from far away with their car, and they take, they like it, you see. See, if you accept this austerity that we shall not eat meat, but we can have very nice food stuff from grains, from fruits, from vegetables, milk, sugar, so many nice food stuff. You will forget. Simply you have to learn. That is not very severe austerity, but simply our our process is Krishna consciousness. 
how from this present consciousness we want to change to Krishna consciousness. So these austerities are required. No illicit sex life, no meat eating, no intoxication. No intoxicants. Our boys and girls, they do not even smoke, they do not take tea, coffee, and what to speak of other intoxicants. Uh, they were intoxicated. Some of them were LSD, but they have given up to this Krishna consciousness movement. And no gambling. These four principles you accept. It is not very difficult, not very severe. Simply you have to be willing. Yes. Why? If I can live on such nice food stuff, why shall I take to uh, animal food uh, for which so many animals have to be killed, so many birds have to be killed? Uh, the Rishabde, it is not new introduction. Rishabdev also instructed his boys, princess, that my dear boss, if you simply indulge in sense gratification, then the result will be that you cannot get real unlimited happiness. The whole program, austerity, he is advising to his uh, sons that, uh, my dear boys, this beautiful body, this opportunity, you cannot misuse it simply for sense gratification, but tapa putraka, my dear boys, you please accept austerity. Now I have explained what is our austerity. It is very simple. Four items of austerity, nothing more. Uh, we are not stopping your love or your sex life, no. Simply you are trying to regulate it, that's all. There is no question of stopping your eating, stopping your mating, or stopping your sleeping, or stopping your different, nothing. No stop, but don't increase the degree <coughs> to the death point. <coughs> that's like Paul to leave. When we leave, we must have some temperature. Oh. I, when there is no temperature, that means his dead body. But that temperature should not be increased to the 107 degree. That should be, that should be controlled, you see. We must have some temperature. Without temperature, if our body is cold completely, oh, then it is finished. Temperature must be there, but not more than 96.6 degree or 98.6 degree, yes. But if we increase the temperature to 107 degree, that means death. When there is 105 degree temperature, the doctors take very precautionary measures so that it may not increase further. And actually I have seen as soon as one gets 107 degree, he collapses. So,